Welcome back everybody, family, friends, overcomers. This is Kenny, Healing Homestead. Um, back inside the house working today. Um, I think last time I left off with you guys, um, I was working on this back bedroom uh, hallway floor behind me. Um, I got it down, I still need to attach it. Um, this is gonna lead into the main bathroom area and the kids rooms back here. So this is gonna be, I believe the girls room and then into this hallway where all the tools and stuff are, that's gonna be Caden's room. Um, but the main hallway I got decked, you can see, and then back behind me, the floor is gonna be open. So I'm gonna be working on that today. Um, it's a tight spot, it's kind of hard to film. I'm gonna do the best that I can to bring you guys along with me. We got some exciting stuff coming. So thankful for the weather warming up. Um, looking forward to spring. I am not a winter person. I enjoy the snow for Christmas and sledding with the kids. But other than that, you could throw me in the South Florida heat and humidity, um, Arizona heat, and I would probably just thrive and feel just fine out there so the midwest is uh it's got its uh times when i'm definitely with the seasons and then when it changes i, I enjoy it and i'm thankful for uh spring when it comes back around but the winter is not one of my favorites i do like looking out and seeing some nice glistening white snow around christmas but it totally missed us this year so we we didn't get snow on christmas we got it afterwards and i'm hoping that we're done with it because it's going to make things a lot easier if we can not have a bunch of snow dumped on us with all the stuff we got to do out um, on the farm and in the pasture. It's just, it's going to be a lot if we can't um, be out there working because of the weather. So uh, I'm going to try to get to work, quit talking and uh, come join me. Okay, so all done with that portion of cutting out and trimming along the walls. And as you guys can see, uh, lucked out here, there's a stud on this side. On this side, I'm gonna have to get back there a little bit. But all I'm gonna do is run some bracing uh, from that stud back there over to this one just to support that floor and the weight that's gonna go there. Same thing with over here. Um, which I've pretty much done on all the floorings and exterior walls and um, it's going to be the same thing anywhere I need to support if there's going to be something over here like I know the wood stove is going to be here um, where that box is pretty much uh, we're going to have to put some extra support in there because it's going to be heavy so like this this picture that's an underestimate an underestimated picture because you might need like three or four and a dolly that that thing is heavy
Stop to talk to you guys for a second. I don't know if you caught that, but I cut that piece of wood, had the corners all notched out and went and took it over there and I had it on the wrong sides. So these notches needed to be turned the other way on the other edges. So I'm gonna be cutting this piece again, but whenever you mess up on something like this, I've already measured what those corners are gonna be. So I'm gonna use this as a jig to kind of trace out the correct corners on it um but stuff like this is gonna happen like i said i mean it, it won't go to waste because a lot of this wood um that we're gonna have laying around we're gonna use for other projects and may, whether it be piecing it together and making a foundation for a roof on one of these hog sheds that we're gonna turn into a goat shelter um so be it um mila our eight-year-old she actually had an idea of keeping some of these little cuts off of uh, some of the wood that we got and making some a little wood block set for her little brother and giving it to him for Christmas. So we'll probably do something like that, but um, nothing goes to waste, but those mistakes happen, man. I mean, if you can't take it um, just with in stride and with a smile, then this is not the type of project for you. Um, but I'm going to cut another piece and, and get this in there because I'd like to get this hallway done once i get the hallway finished then it's going to be this living room that i'm standing in just getting the floor up and getting that gone so that we can uh actually have a full decked house it's going to be really nice to get this finished up i mean actually it's been going a lot smoother and quicker than i thought coming in and having delena help me do like the insulation when i cut the perimeter of a room and then me cut the flooring and then having her attach it has really really sped this up so uh, i'm gonna keep working but just thought i'd uh see if you guys noticed that and if not explain what i was doing and then if you see me tracing out around uh this piece that i had already cut uh you'll know what i'm doing Well, I just finished uh, this hallway leading into the bedroom. So there's that piece. My second piece that I cut there because the other one, I notched the corners on the wrong side, but it's all down. Good to go through this hallway. Um, now I'm gonna see how much time I have left to work on this floor right here. Because if I can get the floor down and in insulation, then uh, we'll have this other project that we can start working on, which is building the base for this uh, wood stove, which if you want to look it up, just go to um, the So The Land, the Contreras family. I think his name is Jason. He is incredible at building stuff, man. I, I, I saw him at the um, Homesteaders of America in Virginia, but I couldn't say that I had actually watched any of his content. I'd seen him on YouTube when I was researching uh, mobile home builds and stuff like that. And that's actually how I first uh, ran across the Holler Homestead too. They were up there. Um, they weren't speaking or anything, but just kind of saw him. And it, it 
it's really cool meeting these people, seeing them exercise their talents um, and teach and just uh, show people how if you put some hard work in and some determination and uh, even risk failing that uh, you can do some pretty amazing stuff. But they, they have a lot, a lot of good content and building stuff. And that's all I want to do. Me and uh, Delana want to have this channel to look back on um, later on down the road um, and just to be able to see what we've done with it and and to honestly like our kids are a couple of them are um flying the coop i guess you could say um our one daughter megan she went to thailand to hang out for a little bit and uh we don't know when she's coming back <laughs> uh it's it's just cool to um raise your kids see them take off with um the things that you've shown them, the things that they've picked up themselves and uh, to see them excelling and, and moving forward in their lives. And uh, Tyler's still moving into the military and he's leaving in a couple of weeks. So we're soaking up as much time as we can uh, with him while we got him. And, and then they're gonna be off uh, creating their own lives and uh, uh, starting that journey into adulthood. I mean, they're both adults. Uh, Megan's 19, Tyler's getting ready to be 18 in May, um, but it's really cool to watch. And then knowing that our littles, we're going to be teaching them this lifestyle. And um, I know Mila, she's super excited. She's already got some t-shirts uh, picked out of, you know, uh, farm sweet farm, kind of off the home sweet home uh, stuff you see. And uh, she's super excited to be a farm girl and just that she's going to be able to tell everybody that she's grazed on a farm and she's got a bunch of animals and it seems like uh over the last couple of generations that that's kind of phased out and people have more um wanted to pull out of that lifestyle um and then it seems like covid hits and things are getting kind of sketchy out there when you go to the grocery stores or um when it comes to stuff like that and the self-sustaining and farming doesn't all sound so bad now i mean we started a little bit pre-covid we had already gotten chickens and we're planting a big garden um the year that we moved into the house that's on like the first couple of episodes of our youtube channel um and so we had already kind of started in that direction and then that just confirmed it yep uh we we need to do this we we want to do this and we feel like that's been instilled in us for a reason and so hopefully this helps you guys um for now i'm going to um sign off i'm probably going to try to tear up a little bit of this flooring and um we'll see if i can get any of that done i also got to go pick the the kids up uh so one way or another, uh, I will catch up with you guys next time. Keep overcoming. Keep uh, just striving forward and, and taking the steps into um, whatever it is you're called into. And if it's not this, then enjoy just hanging out with us on this channel. It's going to get super exciting here come spring. I guarantee you we're going to have baby goats jumping around. We're going to have uh, stuff popping off in the garden. And I'm going to pick up uh, the staple gun I need to put my hive together for the bees. Um, and I've already talked to my friend Bill that's giving me part of his colony. I don't know exactly how that's going to work, if he's going to be splitting his colony or if he's giving me the whole thing. But he said that all I needed to have was a hive box ready and um, the the trays that go inside of it. Um, and I think he's going to give me his trays and he's going to take mine and, and we're going to go from there. So uh, that's all going to be exciting. I'm super excited about trying to beekeeping. I've been trying to do all the research I can, watch as many videos as I can. I got a book for my wife a while back that I thought she'd be interested in, but I'm going to be digging into that. And then I'm going to get back into my notebook that I got from the Honeystead uh, when I took that uh, off-site course there with them. It's like a workshop. Uh, they gave me a book with a lot of stuff in it. So it's going to be exciting uh, getting all this stuff going and just starting to build this homestead into our place and a place that uh, not only blesses us, but blesses people 
that come on to it and can enjoy it with us. So uh, for now, I'm gonna get back to work. Catch up with you guys later. Okay, I ran across something that I wanted to show you guys just in case there's anybody out here as crazy as we are trying to do the same thing and may run across this and it may be helpful. So there's metal beams that run underneath the house. Um, like you see how the joists, floor joists are running like this. That's actually east and west. Well, the I-beams or the metal beams are running north and south. So the I-beam was sticking up just enough to where when I went to go put that uh, support two by six in right over there, um, it was holding one end of it up. I I ran into that, I think in the master bedroom and I ended up having to pry on the two by six and put it underneath some tension and then screwed it in and it worked. But what I did um, in the video just a second ago was I just notched out around where that was gonna be at and it gave me a whole lot more room and it's a lot of a snugger fit, more snug. <laughs> I make up words as I go if you guys haven't caught on to that. Um, but you know what I'm saying. Right down there. Let me get this insulation back so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. So right there is my notch. The beam is probably two inches width. And so I just notched it out like maybe a quarter of an inch. Um and about three inches long and that thing fits in there to where this two by six right here is up underneath where the floor is going to be over here it's up underneath where the floor is going to be there and there so when i lay this piece of plywood on top of it it's going to stay flush with everything else and um i'm going to be able to easily attach uh the plywood down to that two by six now because that two by six is partially up underneath that wall and that's one thing you'll run into if you're doing one of these mobile home uh rebuilds like we are is that uh they built it uh not planning on it getting torn up and being rebuilt i'm just gonna attach put some three inch screws <clears throat> in that two by six um and attach it to the other one and then i can go ahead and start laying the plywood on top after i get the floor insulated so you guys will get to see me do that and then i think i'm going to stop here for tonight um because i'm running out of time 
Uh, but actually I got quite a bit done because I got the hallway done in there and then this portion leading out of um, the hallway into the living room front room area but really like I said earlier we're just trying to get this portion done here so that we can unpack this wood stove have our buddy um, Dave come out and run the pipe up for that and just he's a he's a home inspector so he's going to make sure that everything is legit and uh good to go for us to be able to burn, uh, burn wood when it comes time to winter being out uh being really bad out here and if there's an electrical outage or something uh crazy we go off grid for whatever reason we'll have wood um burning so uh let me get this wrapped up but i wanted to share you guys uh share with you guys that um definitely made it a lot easier on this piece than the other piece I uh, wrestled with so so I looked at the clock and realized I don't have enough time to do the insulation and stuff in this all I did was I laid a piece of plywood over the top of those studs that's going to be okay I'll probably run a screw in it just so that it's not moving anywhere but I honestly my kids love coming over here and just playing in the house with all the dust and mess and you know they have just make believe time and imagination time over here it's awesome seeing them play they'll take little chunks of the wood and draw stuff on them and have little tea parties with chunks of wood <laughs> it's pretty awesome but i don't want anybody falling in in between these joys so some of this stuff is open and they all all know to be careful when they come over here because things have been uh changing often but um uh, for today i'm gonna let you guys go hopefully you guys are like i did i ran into a mistake with the two by six on the other side and i learned a little something from it when you're going through life man if you are making mistakes and having to do stuff over um hopefully you're learning something from it because if not you might end up repeating those same mistakes and i don't think anybody wants to have those cycles of mistakes and failures in their lives i know i don't um and I really am proud to have this second chance at, at doing this out here and having a life. And, and so thanks for joining me today. It's Kenny from the Healing Homestead, Second Chance Farmer. Uh, until next time. Bye.